Now, for the viewers at home, are wondering that uh, why isn't K- uh, Chick Fil A part of this? It's quite simple, because they don't support our fans, you guys. Most of our fans are gay. And that's okay. Welcome to Bro Taste This. And live from Madison Square Garden, in this corner, we have 12 inches of beautiful black locks, 300 pounds of nothing but muscle, ready to rock and roll today, Phil Golden Corral. Hello. Welcome. And joining me today, as always, it's... The one and truly, the one and only, Juan La Leyenda Legend. What's up, what's up? Damn, that was actually pretty good. Let's go. Let's go, I'm actually Let's pumped. go, bro. Ready to kill some uh, fucking uh-huh. chickens. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, it, it saddens me that we can only, you know, hang out when there's food or wine or we're drinking involved. But we do it for you guys. Do it for the people. We mm-hmm. sacrifice ourselves and our bodies for you. Yep. Yep. Other than this, we don't hang out at all. In fact, we don't even know each other. Yeah, I barely know this guy. Oh yeah, we only see each other once a week, and yeah. Yeah, if that. <laughs> what do we call those mukbang Wednesdays? Mukbang Wednesdays, yes, yeah. yes. And uh, you know, we've been doing that since our Hooters days. Oh yeah, good old Hooters days. Good old, you know, it's, it's <coughs> gone full circle. We gone from boneless chicken wings to chicken wings to uh, fried chicken sandwiches today. That's right. You know, Tell, break, yeah, break it down. Tell the people what we're doing. We're gonna be breaking down all kinds of different chicken sandwiches from the different uh, reputable places. See what got me started on this whole chicken journey right now is uh, I saw an article claiming that the new Burger King chicken sandwich, the new Royal Crispy Chicken, is the best chicken sandwich out there in the market. And if you know anything about Burger King, that's a complete horse lie. I mean, so like either a these journals have gone full winos and don't know what they're fucking talking about or they're being bought out by burger king fair the, you know the, yeah. the new crown are you saying the king was uh influencing and lobbying for some votes there is I, that what you're saying are you, you know? selling the name of the king yeah I, yeah don't get me wrong we all kings and queens we all kings and queens but something nefarious is going on behind the scenes all right all right well let's see if we can uh put I, I our finger I, on it today Exactly, and I don't want to put the you know the blame on to Burger King when it should be the blame on the journalists, or vice versa. Fair, exactly. Fair. But before we get into old things, chicken, what have you been up to? How have you been, dude? I've been great. Um, this week mm-hmm. I was getting over a little bit of a cold, and I lost my uh, sense of taste, so I ended up drinking like six ounces of spoiled milk before I realized it was spoiled. Jesus Christ! Yeah. You get COVID or something? I I don't think so. But you lost your sense of taste. Yeah. But I didn't get COVID though, cause okay. I didn't I didn't test. So if you don't test, you don't get it. Oh, I like that. Yeah. The don't ask, don't tell. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That yeah, that, my doctor was getting pissed off, and I was telling them this, but that's thank you for putting it, putting it like that. Yeah, that, yeah that's what they call me, Doctor Phil. Uh, all right, that is what they call you. Gee. Well, I mean, that's Gee. I mean, how was your that, week though? Oh, uh, different from yours. You know, I. Fortune didn't get sick or anything like that, but I did get arrested. Oh yeah, you did get fucking arrested. I got arrested. Apparently, I had a warrant for me in like a different county, right? Yeah. And uh, I I had a warrant for driving without insurance, which uh, I guess is a, an arrestable offense. Yeah. And uh, well, because of COVID, did they, they rough you up while they arrested you? Well, I was surprised because like it was one cop at first, right outside yeah. the door. I'm like, okay. I worked the night to come out there. It's like almost like maybe two or three. And um, yeah, she comes out there. He's like, are you Philip Corral? I'm like, yeah. And then like, she's like, oh, we got a warrant for your arrest. I don't know. I gave her such a manly voice, but (laughs) I mean, maybe that's what I was imagining of her. But um, yeah, as soon as I came outside, she's like, we got a warrant for your arrest. Four other cops, two cops came from like the left side of the house and the right side of the house. Like, from the side of the house out of nowhere, like yeah. it went from one cop to like six cops easily. They were prepared for you to run. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, Oh what? <laughs> what is this for? You know? Yeah. Did they put the cops on like, oh, we don't know. Was there any background music while they were there? No, no, no. So it's not I, like cops, the show. Bad boys, bad boys. 
No, no. But my neighbors are out there, you know. I'm good with my neighbors, so they were making sure that, like, they weren't going to, like, body slam me and put their knee on my oh, neck or okay. whatever. All right. All right, know? fair. Mm-hmm. And uh, after last week's episode with the whole Puerto Ricans and the community uproots and all that stuff, I don't take my neighbors for granted anymore. <laughs> no? No. All right, fair. Communities and neighbors are, like, the best of the best. Cause yeah. Unfortunately, that's, all you, you know? that's like a big part of your life, you know, inadvertently, yeah. even if you guys end up there by accident. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's crazy how the life works. But get back to my uh, my police uh, back in the blue story. Uh, yeah, no, they uh, looked it up and like, oh, you w- you got a warrant for uh, driver car insurance. As soon as I saw that, and all I had to do was post bond for 240 bucks. They're like, well... They cuffed me off in the back. They're like, oh, put the cuffs in front of him. Like, yeah. So they were well, way more, like, lenient and cool. Yeah. And after that, it was just a whole, like, like back and forth with the two different, like, police counties. Like, you go pick him up. Like, oh, how about you drop him off? Like, no, how about we meet halfway? They're, like, arguing, <laughs> like, how is the exchange going to happen? You know, where are we going to, like. Like, who's responsible for this? Yeah, who's for this burden? Yeah. <laughs> so, you felt like the burden stepchildren. Yeah. yeah. So eventually they just ended up with like, oh, just have you stay in the uh, in the the jail over here closest to me, and wait for the different county to come in and book me essentially. And I was like, oh, I mean, I have the money. Can I just get the money? He's like, well, you need someone to go get into the station and whatnot, because I was gonna have them come inside the house and like get my wallet. <laughs> yeah, no. And then shoot my dogs. Yeah. Which honestly, at this point. It's not doesn't sound like a too bad, bad option for you. No, it does yeah. not sound like a bad idea. But uh, yeah, so I waited at, at the at the station for maybe like two and a half hours, till my my mother came by and was like, got my wallet, GPS her way to the station because I didn't know where the station was neither. So yeah, nice. Posted bond, waited for the other county guy to come up eventually. How long did that ordeal last? Like maybe two and a half hours. All right, it could have yeah. gotten a lot worse then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just waiting. Right. It's not like they booked me or anything. I was just waiting in like the, the lobby of the police station. Well, I'm glad you're here with us, and you're not some martyr or a headline. You know, honestly, at first they were really on. You know, they were quick to escalate things, so I could see how people were like, "Fuck the police!" Like, yeah, asking for your ID and you know, stuff. Like, I ain't gotta show my ID. But if you're just compliant and enough, and you know, sub subservient or what's the word I'm yeah. for? Subservient or Sub- subservient. subservient. Yeah. If you're s- Siberian. <laughs> yeah, that's what there, we, there that's we what we were trying to say. There we go. Let's get started with these chicken sandwiches though. Yeah, no, I'm you know, I'm essentially I was locked up in the big house. The big <laughs> lobby house. Did you actually have to deal with like other people no. who were locked up? No. Okay. Because it was such a horseshit reason for me to yeah. even like just they, be, they basically put really you petty. in a room with some coffee, I bet. I was literally in the waiting room. I, like, if I wanted to, <laughs> I I could have ran outside and just gone. <laughs> then, like, granted, I would have made it very far. Yeah. Blah, 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 you know, just getting tased <laughs> and all that stuff. So just, uh, uh, developing a nervous twitch afterwards. But um, no, nah, yeah, you would have been great. You would have yeah, put up a fight. Let's crack into this chicken sandwiches, right? Let's do it. Let's do it. Which this one should we start what with? You came here for. This is what the people came here for. Let's start. I think we should start with the Louisianas. The Louisiana, the, the Popeyes? Popeyes. I think we should both okay. start with well, the Popeyes. Before we get into it, let's show the people what we're what we're digging into. So you got the Popeyes coming up right here, right? Right there. Hold on. Mm mm. Love that chicken from Popeyes. We got the Popeyes going against the Colonel. Fried chicken. Twenty three flavors and spices, brothers. We're talking about the good stuff. Now we we wouldn't be pieces of shits if we didn't include McDonald's, McDonald's, and last but not least, as advertised, the one place that got this whole started, the Burger King. All right, so what is this guy? This is the Popeyes. Ooh, 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 it's Popeyes spicy chicken, right? Yeah, this is the Popeyes. Nice. Let's give this bad boy a try. Now, as as the camera will see, you got a little bit of pickles in there, a little bit of savory sauce. Okay, so right off the bat, the chicken, 
actually really nice. Yeah, the chicken is awesome. The protein in this, it's nice, hearty. doesn't feel it rubbery. Ma- it maintained the... Yeah, you're right. It doesn't feel like some sort of mystery chicken patty that was like put together. Mm, good way, good way. And also, it maintained the crunch like a motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Plus, with the addition of the pickles and shit. Definitely good. I, you know, just off the first bite, I'm excited to see how, like... Good, the Burger King is gonna good, because the if the Popeyes is already this delicious, Burger King's gonna blow me away then. Okay, so let's get the KFC going. Let's get the KFC going. So while my assistant Juan is getting the Kentucky Fried Chicken going, don't forget to stop by the YouTube channel or the Spotify or wherever you get platforms, and uh, go ahead and give a like and subscribe wherever you get your podcast from. And our content, because we're here to do everything for you. Including Not, yes, for the camera. For the camera, for the one. So right up next is the Kentucky Fried Chicken. Pizza Hut, Pizza Hut. Up next, we have our classic KFC spicy chicken sandwich. What are we thinking, Phil? How is this going to be? Well, just by the looks of it, you got the same components of a pickle and savory, you know. Some sort of spicy sauce. sauce. Yes. Yep. All right, let's give it a go. I feel less seasoning, but more crunch in the chicken. You know, the chicken, comparatively, I feel like it's a little bit more dry compared mm-hmm. to the Popeyes. And um, I think that's where the, the extra spice you, you, you're talking about comes in. And also, one thing I do want to point out is the breading from the KFC just feels a little bit more downgraded, which kind of brings the whole appear, the overall product down, I feel like. If they would have stepped up with the bread, maybe it would have added up a little bit more. It's very, it's very thin. Yes. That's There's a not a lot of it. Another good I own, way to say it. Yeah, because yep. I got a, a really crispy piece of chicken, mm-hmm. but the majority of the breading was very thin, and it didn't hold well. Yeah, that, yeah. That another good way yeah. to say it. Yeah, it didn't hold well comparable to the uh, Popeyes. Yeah, because we waited almost the same amount of time for all of these. So. Yeah. All right. So let's get into the, the Burger- next one. Burger King. Wait, no. Actually, let's say Burger King for last. Let's get into McDonald's. McDonald's. Okay, okay. Now, the next one we're going to be doing in the McDonald's. McDonald's fried crispy chicken. Well, got, the crispy spicy chicken, right? Yep. I got to say, this one looks like the saddest so far. So the, far, yes. I would have to agree this with This is you the saddest that. piece of chicken we've seen. This feels like a school sandwich. <laughs> all right. Like the, the free, you know, yeah. school lunches. Yeah. All that stuff. This feels like a chicken patty from your local public school. Damn. For real. Yeah. All, All right. right. Let's give it a in. go. Cheers. Wow. So right off the bat from the, these three, this one has the most uh, potent of sauces, which I think they did it that to drench it because yeah, of like, the yeah to sad overcome chicken. for the rest of it. Exactly. Yeah, this is like a habanero tasting chicken sauce or something. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're looking for a little bit more spicy, I do see the McDonald's spicy yeah. chicken sauce going there for you. But as far as overall quality, so far Popeye's yeah. is leading in the way. Yeah, I, I, this one's a sad one. I would yeah. give this like a one out of five. One out of five? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though I like their sauce, but like... Yeah, the sauce is... Uh, like The chicken is just so sad compared to the rest of it. <laughs> if I'm going to give the KOC a five, then the... Uh, I mean, the Popeye's are five. The KFC's got to be a maybe a four this has got to be a two then this is just not good enough Agreed. the sauce keeps it above a one yeah but okay. that's about it fair all right let's give it a go with the, the main one. event the burger kanga the main reason why we indulge ourselves in this crazy nonsense now for the viewers at home are wondering that uh why isn't K- uh chick-fil-a part of this it's quite simple because they don't support our fans, you guys. Most of our fans are gay. And that's okay. Because we support you guys. And girls. And all in between. Unlike Chick-fil-A. But, now that I got the PSA out of the way. 
we will be enjoying a delicious. All right. Back at it. Back. What sandwich do we have here, Phil? Ooh, we're going to be enjoying a delicious Burger King Royal Crispy Spicy Chicken Sandwich. What a mouthful. All right. Let's get it. But let's right attack. off the bat, just by the, you know, aesthetics, the bread looks a little little lacking in the bread department, but... I would say they do. Add, they did add, you know, tomatoes and lettuce, which is more than they add to the pickles over there. Hopefully, that adds and you know, it's transparent with the taste. But let's dig in. Not a fan. Too sweet. There's like a sweetness in here. Wow. Okay. Right off the bat. I am like blown away by the sweetness of it. You are completely correct. It's much more sweeter and tastier than I would have imagined from a Burger King. So I can see why people are giving this like the rave reviews because this is a, a different take on a chicken sandwich. You got sort of this sweet molasses, spicy, tangy sauce to the Burger King chicken sandwich, right? And then you got the the help of tomatoes and lettuce on there, which adds to it. I do like the veggies. Mm-hmm. I do like the veggies, but I think that that sauce on there was too sweet for me. But it's not bad. I don't know, maybe like a two, two and a half out of, out of five. Two and a half out of five, wow. You know, honestly, I'll give this a two, uh, three. Great. Right down the middle. It's not, uh, it doesn't over exceed my expectations or under exceed my expectations, but it's just a chicken sandwich. And plain old good old chicken sandwich. But if you had to wait in line and pick out one for your lunch, I would recommend Popeyes. Yeah, holy shit. The bread and like the quality of the bread and the chicken is just so high in the, in the Popeyes. In the Popeyes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, and respect on them. Mm-hmm. They know they're lane and they do it well. They're not cheaping out. I like that. I like that a lot. That was the uh, section of the spicy chicken sandwich, and wow, I am full. I was famished in the beginning of this, but wow, Me too. My, my mouth is full of chicken now. Jesus Christ! Do you want to save those for much, much later? Much, much later. But uh, we'll be right back. We're going to munch down the rest of the chicken, and we'll come back to your regular schedule of programming. Uh. And we are back to a hot start. Wow. I feel terrific after all those chicken sandwiches. And I do not uh, hold back. And if you guys found the, uh, the munching on the mic annoying, well, I'm sorry. But we're doing it for science. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Science. And how dare you come on our channel and try and tell us what to do. Mm-hmm. You know? If you don't agree with science, then you're racist. Because you're racist to the climate and your, you know, climate well, change. Well, you're just racist. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I believe in science. Yes. I'm well, a scientist myself. As I, I just tested well, out all the chicken sandwiches. Didn't you have, like, a mild hobby and phrenology? If I remember correctly, phrenology is the study of uh, observing people named Fernando. No, phrenology <laughs> is observing the size of people's skulls. So you can... Oh, like the thing from Django? Yeah. Like how Leonardo DiCaprio's like, this is the size of a of an African-American's head. Yes, exactly. Just like that. That's called phrenology? Yeah. I thought that was called eugenics. I mean, phrenology can fall under eugenics. Yeah. Oh, okay. So eugenics is like a big, like, you know, inclusive umbrella. Exactly. It's taking all kinds of different ideologies underneath it. That is what people think of when they think of eugenics, inclusivity. Inclusivity, yep, eugenics. Yep. Uh, we are off to a really good start, as you can see. But that's just what we, you know, that's, that's what we do here. That's what we do here. Exactly. At the VYV South Studios. The much grungier studios. Yeah. We don't give a shit over here. We're out here eating chicken sandwiches like it's nothing. Putting them away. Putting them away. Getting arrested. Put a fork in it. Waiting for my mommy to bail me out. <laughs> <laughs> we do things hard over here. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a fucking tough man. But, you know, I do, you know, 
I wish Luis was, would have been here. Our our homie Luis is out and about. As uh, you he, guys will see on YouTube, he had to take a sabbatical because his asshole couldn't handle the chip. No joke. No joke. Uh, for those who aren't aware what we're talking about, uh, we're filming more stuff on our YouTube, more food content and uh, what cocktails and liquor. Yeah, and all sorts of food. Stuff. Yeah, food content stuff <laughs> like that. All fun stuff in the kitchen. Uh, and uh, we did the hot pocky chip challenge, the one chip challenge. And brothers and sisters, oh my god. I was in pain all night. It's painful in the beginning, the first like contact, because at first you're like, "Wow, something this spicy is gonna burn my tongue." But for me personally, I thought it was like a dark, dark chocolate. It was like, "Oh, it's so bitter. It's such a strong taste." Yeah. And then once you start chewing on it, you're like, "Wow, that that that's heat." The spice just slaps you in the face. Oh yeah, and it leaves your mouth blue and your tongue blue. <laughs> the hell what the hell is that dude for me it felt like i, w- I had steam coming out of my ears <laughs> like i shit you not i felt like a fucking bugs bunny cartoon like i had to run to the sink and you literally take ran cup, to like, the sink yeah cu- uh, i guess palmfuls of water and sl- slap them right into my ear hole because it was just so fucking annoying bro i was just you know Luis ran to the bathroom because within maybe a minute and a half you know, cause the whole goal was out of the four of us to see who would break first and grab whatever we need to relieve the heat. And unfortunately, Luis was what down to a minute and so minute and a half. I, I don't think it was that long. I think it was like 15 seconds. Jesus. <laughs> it, it was pretty. It was within that time period. Right. Yeah. And he just ran to the bathroom and got, you know, got speed at that point. Then you got up and went to the sink. Like you were saying, you're you had your head underneath there like a, you know, a big old Beethoven, like a big old Saint Bernard, you know. Just Dude, I just I I shit you not. I, I felt like I had steam coming out of my ears. Like a 1920s cartoon. Like yeah. Boom, you know. It it kind of reminded me of when I drank Everclear. Oh. Yeah. Like a high like. That just Ooh, like yeah. super intense like mm. sensation, or like when you first have wasabi or. Yeah. Or yeah, or wasabi with the ginger. I got really like that's a good that's a good analogy something t- to the extreme of that yeah taste. where it just like clears out your sinuses it just mm-hmm. makes you cry a little bit <laughs> you essentially we essentially boofed hot chips last night best way to my it. we haven't even talked about the second half of the night when we had to fucking go home and deal with the aftermath of eating a nuclear weapon like that good god the pain like i've i i, I i've never got an sti but last night was the closest I ever got to one. Just going to the bathroom halfway through my sleep and just pooping and peeing. I was in the toilet for maybe like 30 minutes. Yeah. And like just like drip of like drip of hot pee <laughs> coming out of straight <laughs> you out of You felt like you had acid coming out your dick. Yeah, I'm out of my dickhead. It was yeah. so sensitive and like, oh, Dude, it was I, so painful. Dude, I had to use, I had to get uh, take like five shits last night and i literally took like three showers because i didn't feel comfortable like going to sleep so i i i'm barely got any sleep last night i I had to take like three showers in the middle of the night it was not a fun night it was not a fun night you you nasty bro you got all nasty and showered up i see i did a respectable thing i just waited in the toilet for a long period yeah See, you know, maybe maybe that's where I locked up. Maybe if I would have done multiple trips to the bathroom, so this is one consecutive. I don't know that I did anything right. It did not feel <laughs> right <laughs> when I was going through it. There's, there's got to be a scientific way to recover from that. You know? Maybe a milk bath. Milk bath. Maybe you know, get just some jello sitting in, in just sit in milk for like an hour. Bodybuilders do it. They drink what breast milk, so there'd be no illogical reason for them not to bathe in milk. Do they really? They do not. What they what? They drink breast milk. They do actually. Yeah, it's good for the uh, muscle recovery. No okay. shit. Yeah. All right. That and steroids, the two things that are good for muscle recovery. I bet. Mother's milk, and S- anabolic steroids. Thank you, Phil. I'm a bit of a gym rat myself. You know that's why I'm looking forward to the month of October. So, You're bro. Hey, what, what do you think about this for catchphrase? 
Now, you guys can hate on this too, but I'm a, I'm a man of m- many things in my head, right? Sober October? More like so bro uh, Terry October. Like so briar Terry, but so bro Terry. No, 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 no. I mean, so bro Terry. No, 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 no. We're trying to force it too much. Trying to force it. Yeah, if it was there, it would be there. Yep. Another, another one of my red flags. You love too hard. Love too hard. You force things too much. I force things too much. I'm just learning how to be a better man every day. One chicken sandwich at a time. One clean room at a time. <laughs> we need we need more men. We need more men. Good old JP. JP. Um, well, what were you gonna say about JP? He's the best. Eh. He's just the best. I think he's overrated. I think his daughter's the best, though. Oh, she's the best. Give you some of the Michaela Peterson. I will. I will, those right wing is so my favorite. The right wing is. They have the best sisters and daughters. They do. They're like. I'm more of a Nabby Shapiro guy myself. Oh, okay. So you you're know, I'm like a man of class and culture. Fundamental, yeah. you know, Christian. You're no, a fundamental guy. She's Jewish. Wait. Oh yeah. I guess you are right. Well, fundamental in the Hebrew way. Right? Sure, whatever you say, Phil. Shalom, brother. Whatever you say, Phil. What yeah, yeah. what were we gonna talk about today, bud? Well, you you've been watching uh, that uh, pedophile stuff. What's it called? Dahmer. Dahmer. On Netflix, right? And uh, you know that's a Milwaukee uh, local, right? Ain't he? That's right. A little um, Milwaukee local cannibal. <laughs> well, you're just a local cannibal. Yeah, you know, like your local Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't caught up most of the show with you know on Netflix, but I'm familiar with the lore of you know Namor, right? Yep. I mean, I, like, what can you say about it, right? Uh, it's starring wh- who's the actor from um, American Horror Stories, the the like emo emo dude. Do you know who I'm talking about? No, not at all. I was never a big fan of H H A. Neither was I, to be A-H-S. honest. H S. Yeah, American Horror Stories. I watched like two seasons and I got kind of annoyed because it kind of felt like they were playing the same. No, don't get me wrong. If you're looking for like you know good material for like your 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 fat bank or good things to like masturbate to, I guess season one, you know, pretty pretty solid. Pretty good. Is that pretty right? Solid. Is that right? I think Lady Gaga was there at one point. You know, if you're a bit of a Gaga, if you go Gaga for Lady Gaga. Okay. All right. You fair. Know. Fair. All right. I, you know, I didn't watch the show, but I'm up to date with the plot. Yes. With the main plot of AHS. And and you are a man of culture. You're a man of yes. class. That is exactly. what you pay attention to. And I think at one of those seasons, Stevie Nicks came by. I think so. As Stevie she, Nicks as was she a witch. Should. As she should. And I'm getting all of this from porn. So, like, I'm just trying to piece things together. Like, oh, okay, Lady Gaga's in yes. some kind of insane asylum. Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Sarah Palin did a, a cameo in AHS as well. Are you kidding me? No. Like Sarah Palin or like Sarah J? Or what's her face? Uh, the chick that played Sarah Palin, the Nalen Palin. Lisa Ann. Lisa Ann. There we go. Yeah. Wait, was Lisa Ann an American For horror real, story? For real, yeah. Are you kidding no, me? No, I'm not. I need to go find that episode. Yeah. We're going to take a break, folks. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's crazy. Lisa Ann. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. You got to look it up. It's uh, it's always so like, you know, good for them. But like, it's so weird for me when I see like a porn actress like outside of their natural habitat. Yeah. Know? Yeah. It's like, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. They're like a fully rounded person. Yeah. They, so, like, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> they're not completely, you know, damaged. Yeah. They're not like a sex robot. No. Uh, one of the earliest like memories I could think of was Sasha Gray. Everyone remember, you know, if you know, you know, of Sasha Gray. Uh, she was out in Inter- Entourage, the TV show. Yeah. Right? She uh, had a cameo as herself, and like she dated the main dude for a little bit, and it's like, that's cool. Like you know, it's still HBO. They're still letting poor actresses bleed into the system and whatnot. And then Mia Khalifa blew up. She didn't even become like a movie star or anything like that. She says. A notoriety porn star did maybe a couple of videos, quit the industry, and now she's like labeled as like, yeah, you took like four dudes in one of the videos. We know what you're up to, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> and she's out there like, uh, she had a recent thing in the past year with ESPN, 
they interviewed her because she was trying to promote her uh, uh, new, I think, organization or her upcoming music career or something. And then the right away, the first question was like, so, like, do you feel like your porn career overshadows what you're trying to do now? And she was like, oh, I'm not, I don't, I'm not comfortable talking about the porn or anything on my past like that. I'm just here to promote my, you know, my current thing right now. And then the guy asked her again about porn or yeah. past. And she just got up and left. And it's like, well, there, there's that, you know. Yeah. So it's always, you know, funny to see that happen. And, you know, Alexis, Texas bleed through and, you know. Well, hey, didn't you say not too many episodes ago that it was one of the world's oldest professions? Yeah, prostitution is one of the oldest profession, and you know. And these are the. This is the top of you know. And if you're in any form of entertainment, of you're you're prostituting yourself. This is a form of prostitution, if you you know. That is what I feel like later. Yeah, we're out here just eating chicken sandwiches for you all. Sacrificing ourselves. Having our arty- arteries or hearts. Hot acid come out of our pee holes. God damn it! I mean, would you? It was so painful. <laughs> but we did it for y'all, folks. You loyal 42 viewers on YouTube. Let's uh, bring it back, though, to Dahmer. Bring it back. Bring it back. I, I would say um, it, it does show like a good show. Um, uh, what, the, Jeffrey Dahmer? Uh, yeah, the Dahmer series, uh, the new one on Netflix. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, like it makes it paints the family side of the victims like uh, on a pretty decent side. Uh, like pretty decent you get a pretty decent picture of the victims and who they might have been uh specifically like the laotian boy uh, oh yeah yeah I bl- who was the dude that Dahmer famously turned into like a zombie because he lobotomized him with a fucking drill mm-hmm. and i believe acid if i'm not ro- if i'm correct yeah i think he sprayed acid into the brain so then yeah yeah like not like the trippy acid but like actual like formaldehyde yeah, you know? yeah, he was trying to like melt certain parts of their brains, essentially. He was Frankenstein in these these yeah, boys. Yeah, he was. Yeah, you know? um, yeah, he was like getting rid of their bodies in any sort of like crude way he could. He would bake the bones and then like smash them with a hammer and shit. Jesus Christ! Yeah, <laughs> you know what's the the backlash about the Dahmer series right now? What? Which is pretty funny, but you know, uh, reasonable too. Is the uh, they la- they listed that on Netflix as like. On their LGBTQ plus section of like the, because if you go through the categories of Netflix, there's you know there's international, there's Spanish, there's like um, uh, black directors and you know women directors, and there's a whole LGBTQ plus section, and that's like one of the main like featured for, you know Netflix yeah. is, is Dahmer, this dude that went out there munching you know. How do you feel that that represents your community, Phil? Uh, well, cannibals. Well, I think I'm pissed off. No. If well, I were to eat a person, I wouldn't eat a gay person. Not because I'm homophobic. It's just because you want the best meat, you know? And the best meat's going to be, you know, a lesbian. <laughs> Why? Soft, tender, to the touch. To the, t- the skin's so tender. Is this weird? <laughs> I mean, would you? Okay, well, what would you do? Would you eat a dude or a girl? And would it be a straight dude or a straight girl? See, I mean, <laughs> I feel like I wouldn't care. You wouldn't care if you're gonna be eating it like a muscle's a muscle. Do you give a shit what the sex of your fucking chicken is? Or yeah, most I mean, most, chi- most of them are, are, are fucking female. But wait, what? Most of the chickens we eat are female. They're not raising roosters and feeding. Them I thought those. most of them are gay roosters. No, you, you momo. Who? How can you tell the difference nowadays? Cause they raise the females for the meat. Oh yeah, they and, do. And they just like kill all the little boys or the, all the little roosters when when they're born. Essentially, you think that's what they do? I think they ship the boy chickens down south. The boy chickens become cockfighters. I agree. The best of the best of the region. You ever seen cockfighting? No. And I, you know what? I was old enough to like have like maybe like. Asked to go when I was in Mexico because mm-hmm. it would it would happen around us, but yeah, I wasn't like that interested in it. So, but now as a ch- fucking adult, I wish I would have like at least gone to one or two, but I didn't go. Mm-hmm. Why have you? No, I wanted to actually when I was out there in Thailand. I was out there in the village because you know you out, I was out there teaching. Can't really do too much, but still explore, right? Um, I was you know walking through the village and 
says they would treat these roosters like you know prize fighters. Yeah. They would have their own banners and like their like win and loss records and like their own mug shots. So like they they would have murals of fallen roosters. I'm like not even like exaggerating. They took their prize fighting chickens. It, like, was, it, it would be like. I don't know some fucking super successful boxer from like Little Havana or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, legit. Yeah. But like roosters, just yeah. like the, El Pollo Loco. You better watch out for this guy. You yeah, know, he's a mean motherfucker. He lost an eye, but he still fights. You know, dude. And have you seen that they like will put like fucking knives and and yeah. the ta- on their claws and shit? They're giving these roosters body modifications. Yeah, they're cyborging these roosters out. I mean, you're not wrong. When are we going to see them, like, attach a laser eye or some shit like that? Yeah, I'm surprised, you know, uh, Capcom hasn't jumped on this. Made a Mortal Kombat with roosters. Oh, different animals. Like, different, dude. like, have, like, Michael Vick be, like, your trainer. Dude, have that'd a be career a great mode. video game. Just like, Either cockfighting or dogfighting. Well, no, see, that's what the Mortal Kombat is. Yeah. You have, like, an ultimate sport of animals. And you have, like, these notorious scumbags be, like, their trainers and all that stuff. Oh, that's genius. Yeah. It'd be, like, a tournament. And, you like, the head honcho would be, like, maybe, I don't know, PETA or something or, you know, <laughs> the worst of the worst. <coughs> hmm. The Ma- first level, you know what? I'm thinking Matthew McConaughey. I don't know why, but I'm thinking him. The whole game is going to be centered around you as a homeless dude with your homeless dog. And you're fighting off constant people trying to take the dog away from you. And the main boss, the last boss, is Peta. So it's like a uh, like a tower of power, <coughs> kind of a thing, right? So we went from Mortal Kombat to Mario with a homeless guy. Homeless guy and a dog. Fair. All right. Fair. See, like Capcom, get on this, dude. This is great. I was thinking I'd buy it. More like Capcom versus Marvel, no? Oh, I mean, yeah. If you want to get more into like the. Have like a rooster coming down with a diagonal attack with like fireworks behind it, like you know, we get really arcadey with it. All right, it. well, let's move on beyond this random hypothetical that's never gonna happen. Well, you don't think this is never gonna happen? Let's move on. All right. Let's I mean, culturally speaking, let's move on, Phil. Let's okay. move on. Okay. All right. Tell me what else you've been reading about this week. Reading about well, um, on YouTube, I've been, you know, I saw what's going on with Dahmer, and I was like, eh. I'm not a big Netflix guy, so you know, I stick to my YouTube holes. And uh, recently, I've discovered that there's this YouTube show or video called Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Right? It came out maybe 12 years ago. It's a short little, like, three-minute video of, like, you know, it's a parody of Sesame Street or, like, um, Wonder Pets or some shit like that, right? It's supposed to be disguised as a kid's show. There's these puppets, and there's this big, tall, red, like, stringy monster thing that's friendly. And they interact with each other. But the whole episode of the three-minute video talks about, like, creativity and the different ways to be creative and how, like, it's fun to use your imagination and all this stuff. But as the video winds down, it gets more darker and gorier and, like, you know, the red becomes, like, blood and, you know, the cake comes up alive and there's, like, guts in it and all this shit, right? So it's really, like, you know, whoa, dude, that's fucked up, you know? Especially, yeah. you know, when I saw it, I was like, Probably super high. It's like showing my friends, like, dude, whoa, dude. I my early twenties were spent that way. They were spending like watching like that shit. Don't hug me, I'm scared. Or uh, Adult Swim. They have the famous uh, home videos. It's just a bunch of like different artists. They, so what home videos is uh, for Adult Swim is just a bunch of like different like artists and V you know animation people getting together making. 15 minute episodes, but each episode is like a five minute short of a different theme, right? So it's all different, like claymation and like animation and trippy stuff. That's like very cool if you're like a druggie, you know? If you're into <laughs> like all the cool, like druggy stuff, then you'll love that <laughs> shit, right? Uh, so, like, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared got renewed or got re amped and rebooted for a TV show now. They had the first season on uh, YouTube, and each episode is like maybe 26 minutes. Of like, you know, they have six episodes each being like, you know, close to 30 minutes. And each episode deals with different subject and don't hug me, I'm scared. And like their second episode deals with death. But they do it in such a like, in a childish way. I was like, damn, this is pretty like, I could potentially show this to a kid and be like, this is what death is. And it just starts off with like this bird dude, like reading the newspaper, like, oh, I'm dead. And then like the whole episode talks about like, 
I'm like, get, like he doesn't, he's not aware that like the implications of death, right? Like yeah. he just reads the newspaper, like I'm dead, you know? Yeah. And he's the whole episode, like we're gonna bury our friend, and like talking about like how it's a big day for him, and like after like the service, like he's gonna be alone. He's like, you know, he doesn't really quite hit that like he's gonna be buried, you know, and yeah. died. And he's gonna be all alone. So the first like five minutes is like a, like a playful song, like getting ready for death. And then the whole like the whole duration of that episode is like moving on, but in a weird like child way because like one of them is like, all right, so is he coming back? Where is he? And the like the logical straight guy of the of the three of them is like, no nah, man, we got to move on. It's like I don't want to move on. And it's just the whole episode is like you know they're trying to build his friend back and somehow the bird gets back, but the whole lesson is death and like. There's, you know, even though it's like a parody of like, you know, kids shows, there's still a lesson in these shows, which is weird. And then it ends with like a big reveal at the end of the first season. They got greenlit for season two. So, you know, I look very forward to see that. Yeah. Which I was, you know, it, first it looks like a non-canonical uh, thing that just happens every episode. It's a different story. But at the end of it, it all ties up into one like, oh, one that's a different thing. like yeah, one overall th- vision. Yeah. Yeah. And like it really peels back the curtain of like, oh, this is how this is working. Yikes. Okay. So Man, yeah, I have been watching that and it's been really fun. I'm so. a, I'm not gonna lie, I saw the first episode, the one that you sh- said was from like eleven years ago, seven years ago. Dude, that was like twelve years ago, yeah, eleven okay. years ago, yeah. I hated it. You hated it. It was weird. It was just it felt like half of it was Sesame Street and then it it turned into like like Every uh, other blank, like, it would go emo for, like, three seconds. Yeah. Like, it would just have, like, these spurts of emo-ness. And it was r- very, um, like you said, like, you were taking it back, right? Yeah, it just came out of nowhere. and It makes you feel different, that's for sure. Yeah, I guess that's, a, yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of like how those, like, sweet little Asian boys were feeling different after they were being lobotomized by Dahmer. Poor Sh- Shane Wasana song. Shane was on his own, which is the King of the Hill reference. Dude, I just saw the best fucking King of the Hill episode this week. Uh, oh, my God. I was laughing so hard. Um, so for, for those who don't know, the two of us, big King of the Hill guys, right? Dude, and King I, of the Hill stands. I've been, try, I've been trying to get you on the King of the Hill train for many years now. Dude, so. I, I've always liked King of the Hill, but like mm-hmm. I didn't I would I had never sat down and like. You know, watch season after season after season after episode, or you know, like I I would just watch it in spurts as in your childhood and when you're growing up. Yeah. You, you know, pre-streaming days. You remember mm-hmm. how that used to be? Yeah. Whatever was on TV, you put it on and like, oh hey, I like this similar animation. Bam. Yeah, but what I was gonna say was the episode that specifically that came out that was fucking dope mm-hmm. was the uh, uh, Pinai episode with when Khan is throwing a Laotian New Year's um event in his backyard mm-hmm. and then uh chain wasana song's family brings over some uh buddhist monks who are gonna like who are looking for the new lama that was supposedly reincarnated in orland texas and the whole dichotomy between chain wasana son and uh yeah the loatian what's his name khan uh, khan yeah, yeah. Is that Chain was on is just the better Loatian, always more like Oh yeah, he's the a better richer, promotion yeah. and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, he's a slightly more successful good dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He has access to the country club that Khan is trying to get <laughs> into. Yeah. The fucking genius show. It's a it's, it's a it's a great show, right? It has great writing. And yeah. then like as as you were about to say, they come in there, they're trying to find a new Dalai Lama, the re the reincarnation of the Dalai Lama. Yeah. And they like see bobby yeah bobby no, hill yeah they're setting up this test for these two um laotian children you know uh khan jr and mm-hmm. chain wasana song and i fuck i was gonna say i fucking love saying that name chain wasana song and then um Bo- bobby sees that chain wasana song is gonna like go first and pick like an item on this rug uh, laid out by buddhist monks and they're like pick an item if you pick the right item um, you are the llama because like the, uh, that item used to belong to the llama. Mm-hmm. And uh, Bobby seeing that chain is going to go pick first and Bobby interferes and like picks the correct item that the llama used to own and like possess. And he is then like dubbed the llama. 
for the rest of the episode. You're familiar with it though, right? Oh yeah. yeah. Do what it, it, how how do, how does that episode rank for you? Is that like one of your more memorable ones, or it was just an okay one in the King of the Hill canon? Um. Uh, well, first off, that scared the shit out of me. My uh, my no, sisters that came through with their uh, British homie, a British boyfriend, over across from overseas. You know, we'll bring him onto the podcast soon. Have him oh, yes, talk about the uh, experience in America. But um, as far as King of the Hill episodes go, uh, that's a pretty funny one. You know, because it shows like the uh, how like dumb you know we ethnics are. What? Right? Isn't that what you're going with? That? No. What are you talking how about? How people like us are like dumb and like. People like King of the Hill, like Hank Hill and the Hill family, are right? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? No. That's what you thought? I thought that's what you gonna. I thought you were setting me up for that. No. Like, look how crazy the ethnics are, right? No, but I love that that's where you took that. Well, Bobby Hill is a Dalai Lama, so they would pick a white man to lead over, you know, the Loatians. Hey, he passed the test, fair and square. He picked the... The tool for the Dalai Lama. Yeah. But, I mean, if you're if we're being King of the Hill, the novelist and all this stuff, uh, my favorite episode is Dancing with Dogs. It's so good. So, like, the whole process what season of season is that one? It's season four, right? Season four, episode maybe three or maybe four, uh, Dancing with Dogs. And the, uh, I was walking out in midnight. Do 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 do. It's like this country song, and like the whole prom premise of it is like Hank Hill and Peggy trying to like reconnect their date night and all this stuff. Yeah, and it starts off with them going out for ice cream. Bobby's like, Allah, you know, Dad, Dad, I'll just I'll just stay home, Dad. And uh, you Fucking know, love Bobby. You know, Hank Hill's like, you know, getting like suspicious, like, you don't want to get ice cream, boy. You know, yeah, boy loves ice cream. So you know, he's driving back. He's like, Peggy, something ain't right about this. He turns the car back around. And we're, you know, it's alluding that, like, maybe, you know, Bobby's, like, masturbating, right? Okay. He's, like, playing Not with fair. his willy and all this stuff. Yeah. And uh, he walks in the house, and it's much worse than that. He's got Lady Bird, the family dog, dressed up in, like, a cowboy suit, like a, like a, like a lady cowboy, like a little bandana, <laughs> a little hat. Bobby's dressed as a cowboy, and they're dancing to a... Uh, uh, I was walking. <laughs> I would have made, like the slow dance song. Oh, right? was he like practicing for a dance or something? Yeah, like he was yeah. practicing for a dog contest, right? And then Hank, like, what are you doing? Like, he's more upset that he's like using the family dog and dressing her up. Dude, Hank loves Lady Bird, oh, yeah. bro. Hank loves that dog more than he loves Bobby. Dang him, dog. And yeah, the whole show is spent, you know, and later dives into a competition of like, I need to win the dog contest, but Lady Bird's too slow. So he, unis- he uses uh, the Khan's dog, the little poodle, yeah. for like a dance competition. And Hank's like offended, like, Lady Bird's a good dog. Why wouldn't you use her? <laughs> so he, he enters the competition with Lady Bird, and it's like, you know, it ends with those two going head to head. Oh my God. I hope I get, I, I hope um, I still have to watch that episode because I'm exactly in season four. Oh, it's such a good yeah. episode, yeah. I like when people ask me like oh like you know uh, I used to have King of the Hill for those who don't know uh, you and a bunch of my other friends used to back in Clinton I used to live in these apartments with my roommates Skrilla Villa what 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 and people would just enter the house you know they just come in they don't even knock they just enter like Bro, hey everybody <laughs> what's up you know <laughs> you're that, so right uh, for those who are familiar with the podcast on episode thirty five we had Blake. Rock and B on there. That's how we got close. Yeah, he just kept coming over. I'm like, dude, what's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> what's up, dude? <laughs> you know, what are you doing here? <laughs> you know, and uh, uh, nothing. Just gonna take a nap. <laughs> but whoever came over, they would be bombarded with King of the Hill because I would have that bad boy going off in the background. Yes. Me and my roommates love King of the Hill. Like people come over, like, is this all you guys watch? <laughs> And I would defend it like, yeah, dude, it's wholesome, it's funny. Put any episode on, any episode on, it's gonna be funny. And like, you know, I, um, you know, I still defend it. So I, you know, it's one of the good episodes I'd recommend out there. Dancing with Dogs. Dancing Kingdom. with Dogs, season four. Yeah. What's up? Hell yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. But um, you know, that you know, bleeds into what I like about you know, nowadays 
just weird animations and themes and whatnot, I guess. Not so more wholesome as it was back then, but, yeah. you know. Yeah, how did you go from, like, such a wholesome Christian boy who hmm. used to watch King of Hell to, you know, uh, alternative emo LGBTQ plus ally oh, I to, would, to I, now? I would say I was always an ally. You were always an ally? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, would never, I was never hateful, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. You know, but don't get me wrong, I would, you know. I'd punch a dude if you know they try to grab you know grab me in my my no no spots <laughs> in a flirty way. <laughs> I wouldn't be you know accepting to sexual harassment. You know? Has that happened before? No, no, no. Honestly, the only time that's ever happened to me was when I was uh, okay. So a good friend of mine used to live in like these like cheap apartments, pretty much like a crack apartment, right? A crack complex we used to call it, and his neighbor. Right across from the hallway from his apartment was this crackhead who was like this old. She was like missing teeth. She would come over and like make them like tortilla dip or some weird bean dip or some shit, right? Uh, excuse me there. Luis is not going to be happy about that. <laughs> he is not. He's going to be like, son of a bitch. God damn it. I, I will put this away. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but the uh, the crackhead. Tell us about your crackhead neighbor. So I was over at my friend's house, right? And they're living like the crack complex, right? La Vida Loca. Yes, yes. We're drinking, you know. They, she comes over, and she's clearly strung out. She's all like, "Oh, I love you guys!" Like already, like you know. Yeah. It's become a nuisance to them. Like you know, she keeps coming over here, like tell her to get the fuck out of here, and like they don't know how to like politely tell her. And eventually, she's you know starts drinking with us, and then. Her and the dude's girlfriend are like, you know, being friendly, like, you know, laughing it up. And then she gets on top of her boyfriend. Like, he's on the ground. We're, I think we're having a push-up contest because this is, you know, young me. I was young and sprightful and a hothead and arrogant. So I was having a push-up contest with him. And then she got on top of him and started riding him like a cowboy, a cowgirl, right? You know, like a, like a horse. Yeah. And he's like, get off of me and all this stuff. She's like, wow, I'm having fun. And uh, you know it's pretty funny. <laughs> so I I go I go I get up and I go to the bathroom, you know, to pee and all this stuff. And uh, I I get done peeing, washing my hands, doing my hair. She comes in and she starts like groping me and like you know trying to put her hands on my like pants and all this stuff. I'm like yo, <laughs> yeah. I'm like yo, yeah. you know I was just kind of like, you know flirtatious like ha, no. <laughs> <laughs> I back up in the bathroom like. Why? You're so friendly and like so nice. It's like, yeah, thank you. I'm a pretty nice guy. And then she started talking about her kid. Oh, nice. Yeah. You, dude, moms love you. Dude, for real. Though. Moms love you. I don't know what it is. I can't explain it. Um, yeah. I had an interesting. Okay. <laughs> Maybe so, they think you make a good daddy. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, so I'll, I'll I'll finish this up with one more quick mom story, right? But since finish you, it up, wrap it up. Since you brought that up, right? Wrap it up. I was boy. uh during the height of COVID, uh, this past like two years, uh, I got st- I got struck in with it, right? Pretty brilliant. And uh, I was still recovering, right? My voice wasn't all the way there. Two weeks had gone by, no longer contagious, but I still sounded like shit, right? And so I went out there with my friends, you know, they didn't give a shit. We went out to the bar, and uh, my voice at this like my voice at this point was like pretty low, like this, right? Because of like I was sick. If I tried to speak normally, it's like uh, uh, uh. yeah, yeah. So I had to keep it in a tone like pretty low, like this. And uh, I went out to the bar sounding like this, right? And no, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> I went out to the bar sounding like this to hide the fact that I you know was pretty sick, right? <laughs> 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 and I ran into a friend's mom from like high school, right? She's like, "Oh, hey Phil, how have you been?" Oh, hi, Mrs. So and So. I've been good. She's like, "Wow!" First, everyone's comments like, "Your hair's really nice. How have you been?" They're all really friendly towards me, and like most older people love touching my shoulders and yeah. my arms. She's like, "Wow, you're so big. You know, you got in so tall. You're big and all this stuff. Yeah. You grew up." And I'm like. And then, then I started talking like, yeah, I, I work at Nestle and let's make chocolates and they pay me pretty well over there. And I sound like that. She's like, wow, your voice got much deeper. It's like, 
Yeah, it's just stress. <laughs> <laughs> it's just stress, right? And then uh, we, I went outside and smoked a cigarette, as you do, right? After you start drinking a little bit more. And she came outside. She's like, you know, what else have you been up to? And it's like, oh, it's just trying to stay alive, it's, you know, in this economy. Just flirt, you know, joking about uh, politics, right? Yeah. And then uh, we, I get talking about her kid. He's just had a a, 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 a baby. These past three years, so I was like, "Oh, how's how's he been?" and all this stuff. So it's pretty funny, you know. I'm not saying I could have done anything with her. It's just, you know, it's nice to feel <laughs> like, you know, the it's mo- it's nice to flirt with that idea in my head. Like, clearly, she was just checking up on me because she hasn't it's seen nice me in years. It's nice to feel wanted. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice to feel, you know, chased sometimes. <laughs> He's just got to feel chased. <laughs> but you know, it's clearly she was just, you know, yeah. <laughs> she was just checking, she checking up, up on, on me. me. <laughs> <laughs> You're over here reading into it. I'm like, uh, over here thinking to myself, like, you dirty woman. That's beautiful. You want to run away with me? Of course. That's, that's beautiful. Don't say, don't say it like that. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, you know, most moms are you know, really nice to me, so you can't argue for anything more. And I'm pretty nice with their daughters. What's up? What's up, ladies? What's ladies. Up? What's up? Hey, Ladies. Especially of anybody from Southeast Asia, <laughs> that's that's his favorite flavor. Mm, I I mean, I've had many flavors, and I think the best flavor is those who are genuine to themselves. And with that note, folks, we're gonna end in a high note. And by that, I mean a thank you, a thank you to you, to you, and. Best of all, to these chicken sandwiches, to the chickens that were slaughtered, <laughs> thousands of chickens. For Don't forget to rate and review. Mm-hmm. Don't forget to give a thumbs up. Don't forget to pay your bonds so you don't end up in jail. Great point. Mm-hmm. Don't forget to pay your uh, no insurance tickets. <laughs> With that note, thank you so much. We'll see you next week.